Hey Alex. Yes, John. How are you, my friend? I am fine. Okay, I have to ask you something. Yes, go ahead. So, why do you always waste your time on the internet? You know what, John? I hate you. So you must be thinking what I am trying to achieve by impersonating John and Alex. Well, this over here is a very small chat application which is voice controlled. And that is some pretty cool stuff, right? In this chat, instead of typing messages, we can just talk and the browser will identify what we are saying. And then we can send the identified voice text as a chat message. This application at its core is built using ASP.NET Web Forms. Signal R for client server communication and Web Speech API for speech recognition in the browsers. I will now show you how to create this chat application and be able to use our voice as an input. But first, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button below this video. Doing that will make sure that you will always stay updated with the new stuff coming out on this channel every now and then. This is Visual Studio 2017 and the first thing that I am going to do is to create a new project of type ASP.NET Web Application. Select a folder of your choice and provide a project name. I am going to use chat application as a name. Click on OK. This is going to be an empty web forms application. Click on OK again. Now first we need to set up the signal R for this project. For that go to solution explorer, right click on the project name and then click on add then new item. Under Visual C Sharp and Web Folders, select the Signal R Hub class and rename it to Chat Hub. Click on Add. Now inside this Chat Hub class, we need to provide two method names. The first one is going to be the one which will be on the server and will be called from the JavaScript code on the client browsers. The second one is going to have its implementation in the JavaScript code of client browsers and is going to be called from the server whenever we will need to broadcast any message. So this is going to be public void send with the arguments for the username and the chat message. So a string name and then a string message and then we will need to call a method whenever this send method will be called from the client browsers and that method is going to be send message and we will need to provide the name and message as an argument for this function implementation in the JavaScript code. The next thing that we need to do is to add another item which is going to be an Owen startup class. So right click on the project name, click on add and then click on a new item. Select the Owen startup class and let's just call it startup.cs. Now in this file we only need to add a single line of code which is going to be app.map signal r and that is it. We are done setting up signal r for this project it's now time to add a web form and for that right click on the project click on add new item select the web form type and then let's just call it default.aspx in this web form the first thing that i will do is to remove this form element and then to set the title as my chat application and then we will need to add the references for the signal r jquery and the dynamically generated hub signal r script so this is for jquery and this is for jquery.signal r and this is for the dynamically created hub script it's time to add the html elements which we are going to use to set up the chat system we are going to need a couple of text inputs the first one is going to be for the username the second one is going to be for the chat message which we will type in and then we will need a couple of buttons like to set and print the username on the web page and also another one to send the chat message to the server which will then subsequently be broadcasted to all of the different connected browsers. So this is the input for the name of the user with the id txt name. This is the button which when clicked will print and set the name of the user. This is the text field for the chat message with the id txt message. This is the button with the ID btn send which when clicked will send the message to the server. And then we will also need a couple of div containers. The first one is going to be for printing or displaying the name of the user and the second one is going to hold the list of all the chat messages. So these are the divs along with some inline style values. 
the div name is going to be used for the name of the user and div messages container is going to hold the chat messages and now it's time to add the javascript code to associate behaviors with all of these html elements and for that the first thing that we need to do is to add a script element now inside this script element we need to execute a function when jquery will be loaded that can be done by providing an anonymous function as an argument to this dollar function Inside this function, first we need to fetch the references of all of these HTML elements by using document.querySelector function and then providing the IDs as arguments. Next, we are going to need the reference of the chat hub and this can be done by fetching the value of $.connection.chat hub like this. When the btn setname button will be clicked, then we need to print the name of the user on the web page. And for that we are going to create an on click handler like this one over here whenever it will be clicked then we are setting the inner text of div name let's now provide the implementation for this send message function which is going to be called from the server chat hub class and for that we can assign a new function to the chat dot client object so chat dot client dot send message equals to function and this function is going to have the arguments for the name of the user and also for the message text and whenever this send message function will be called then we will have to create a new chat item element and then append it to this div messages container div this can be done by first converting this div messages element into a jquery object and then calling the append function and then we will need to append a new element this can be done by creating a new element using jquery and then using template string to provide the element information along with the tokens for the name and message and finally when the signal r hub has been started then we can provide and execute a callback function so whenever the hub will be started then this btn send buttons on click event handler will be set and in this click event handler whenever this button will be clicked then the server's send method will be called which will have the argument values for the username and also for the chat message and with that we are done with the basic implementation of this chat application in which we can type in the chat messages and then we can send it to be broadcasted to all the different connected browsers and now let's test this code if it is working and then we will move on to modify this code to add the voice recognition capabilities this application is running in two different tabs of the browser and let's just now set the names so this is for the first tab and this is for the second one and now we can test sending the chat messages and now click on send message so messages are being sent and broadcasted from the server to all the connected browser tabs okay so our basic code is working now it's time to add the speech recognition capabilities and for that we are going to use the web speech api the first thing that we need to do is to create the object for the speech recognition and speech grammar list classes depending on the browser we need to fetch the reference of the speech recognition and speech grammar list classes for firefox the class can be fetched from speech recognition and for chrome it can be fetched from webkit speech recognition Similarly, we can fetch the reference of the speech grammar list class. Now let's have a variable for the grammar which we are going to use which is this one JSGF version 1.0. We can now create new objects out of these speech recognition and speech grammar list constructors. So recognition object will be created by calling the constructor of speech recognition and similarly we can create the speech recognition list. Now we need to add the grammar to this speech recognition list. This can be done by calling the function add from string and we can provide the grammar and a weight value. Next we will need to set the grammars property of this recognition object with this speech recognition list object. That can be done by simply setting the value of this object into this grammars property. And then we need to set the language which is going to be recognized by this API and that is going to be English language. The final property which we need to set for this example to work is the interim results property and we are going to set the value as true. So when the interim results property is false and when we are speaking into the browser and when 
the speech API is trying to recognize what we are speaking then it will only give us the complete result like the entire sentence which we have spoken into the browser but when this property is true then it will provide us a stream of results with all of the immediate identified words which we are talking into the browser so we are going to set it to true and we can see how the different words are going to be identified and then corrected by the speech api's ai we will need to assign a function to the recognition.onResult event and that function will be called whenever our voice will be recognized by the speech api so recognition.onResult this is going to be a function and it will have an event as an argument now when we are setting this interim results to true then this function is going to be called multiple times in the stream of results and when we will get the final result then there is a property which is called is final which will be set to true and we can then know that the final result has been retrieved and when we will know that then we will simply send the message to the server so the first thing that we need to do is to fetch the command from the event and that can be done by you know fetching the first result so this is a two dimensional array so we need to fetch the first result and the first item is going to contain the transcript property so this transcript property is going to contain the identified text from our speech let's also check if this is the final result in the stream or not so let is final equals to event dot result the first result and then is final when the identified transcript is received then we can set this value inside this txt message text input to check what words have been identified txt message dot value equals to command and when this is the final command in the stream then what we can do is we can send this chat message to the server so when is final is true then we can simply call chat dot server dot send and we can provide the value for the username so txt name dot value and then we can provide the command as the chat message the final thing that we need to do is to add a button which when clicked will start the speech recognition and we will also need to provide functions for the speech end event and the on error event in case any error happens so first let's just add the button we can add the button just beside this txt message input and we need to provide this button's click event handler so whenever this button will be clicked then the speech recognition should start by calling the recognition objects start function and when the speech has ended then we need to stop the recognition by wiring up a function with the on speech end event let's also handle the on error event so whenever there is any error then we can simply set the error value inside the txt message input and that's pretty much it that we need to do for this small chat application now all that is remained to be done is test the code which we have written over here so the application is running and first we need to check if there is any error in the console or not and it looks like there is a typo which we need to fix so this should be over here somewhere okay so the error is gone and now we can open this application into another tab let's just set the name for the first tab and also for the second tab and now we need to give voice command so there is one more thing that we need to do when we are using the web speech api and that is for the user to provide the permission to the browser to be able to use their microphone now let's give a voice command hey john and it looks like there is another error and it is saying cannot read property zero of undefined okay so i guess we have provided the name of the results property incorrectly so we need to use results now let's refresh both of the pages again let's try again giving the voice command hey john yep it's working now now let's try for the first tab hey alex how are you 
and it looks like our code is working and the voice is being recognized as well and this is how you can create a chat application which is voice controlled all you need to do is to use the web speech api to recognize the voice and then translate it into the text and that is all that this video has to offer you guys do let me know what you think about it if you have any questions then feel free to use the comments area also if you think that you like this video then please don't forget to like it and also subscribe to this channel and you will always be the first to know about any latest video updates and with that i will take my leave and i will see you in the next video till then have a great time